Well, I want to say good morning and welcome to Engineering Tomorrow's Machine Learning Day. We are so excited to be here. I know it's almost the end of the year, so I know you guys are all excited. It's going to be a fun day. We have the phenomenal Milton Davis here to lead the session. Just quickly again, if you are signing on and you do not have your school name, please please change your Zoom profile uh, to represent your school. Do not hesitate to type in chat. We wanna hear from you all, say good morning, welcome. I see everybody's telling us what state, what school. Good morning, Phelps, good morning, Daylight, Twilight. Thank you for being here. So I don't wanna take any more time from this amazing day that's about to get underway. The day is all about machine learning and you guys are gonna be building something kinda of cool. So can't wait to see what you guys do, but I'm gonna stop speaking and let Milton Davis take it away. Oh, Monica, that is an awesome handoff. Welcome, you all. We're so excited about machine learning today. I'm going to give a special shout out to my buddy, Vicki Wilson, all the way from Australia, repping with us. Hey, ET is going global. If you didn't know it, we're going global. All right. And it Phelps A, shout out to you all. Shout out as well to Penny Britt from Daylight, Twilight, and all that you do. We're so happy they brought the whole school to machine learning day. The whole school. Isn't that exciting? All right, let's do this. I'm, I'm just, I'm psyched. Can you all see? Give me a thumbs up. Can you see my screen? Bam. Okay. Welcome to Machine Learning Special Lab Day. You know why we're excited about this day? Because machine learning helps us improve systems. It allows us to utilize machines to do things that it'd be very difficult for a human to do and machines can learn and teach themselves. And you're teaching machine today. You got two machines. It's one, it's you. You developing this catapult. And two, it's the catapult and the teaching data you're gonna use to make it more precise, to make it more accurate. Man, we're gonna have some, we'll have a, we'll have a nice competition, not just about how far the catapult can go, but how accurate, how precise. Oh, I'm excited. Hey, but before we jump in, I want to engage with you all some. Can we do that? Can we engage just a little bit? Thank you, Jillian. If you could go to slido.com and type in those numbers, my buddy Jillian put them in the chat, 214-94147. She put a nice star for that too. It will allow me to engage with you some. All right, so got to... Hey. Oh, thank you for unmuting. Man, I, I'm excited that you wanted to talk to me though. I'm going to hit play on this. And we're going to start off a little light with this one. Here's the first question. Just engage with you a little bit. First question. It's early. What's your go-to breakfast meal and or bre uh, beverage? It's early. What is your go-to? Oh, somebody said the McGriddle. You got a biscuit. Oh, no, it's a pancake. You got some sausage and some syrup. I love oatmeal. Oatmeal is so versatile. You can do anything with oatmeal. Oh, pancakes. Pancakes. IHOP has some solid pancakes for sure. Milk and honey. I don't know if you ever heard of milk and honey. My God, great breakfast. Are you getting hungry? Cereal, the egg McMuffin. Ice cream for breakfast. Monica, ice cream for breakfast. Is that you, Monica? Did you put that in the chat? I'll say no, Monica said it's not her. All right. Not me. Egg Mc, <laughs> the egg McMuffin is coming in strong. A good old banana. Someone said a Sprite. Sipping on Sprite. Nothing wrong with that. This is good. Thank you all for the engagement here. This is great. Great. Nice. Just some straight up water. Not mad at that. That's good. Excellent. Bacon, egg, and cheese. Oh, I love waffles. Oh, man. Belgian waffles. I like to, this is what I make on the weekends for my family. Waffles or pancakes almost every other weekend. Cold pizza. All right. Good, good. This is good. Excellent. Nice. Just bacon. Just, just, just pal on just bacon. Orange juice. You know, I don't see any coffee. I don't see any tea. I thought, I thought my buddy would have put in some coffee or tea. That's okay. That's good. Excellent. Hey, we probably should talk about the lab a little bit. Let's do that. Let's talk about the lab. What is your most, what do you think is the most popular machine learning application? Like, what do you think is really popular? Is it social media features? Is it just the product recommendations that you see? What do you think? Image recognition? What do you think is most popular? 
Mar did you know marine wildlife preservation? They're using machine learning for great stuff like that. Yeah. Language translation. Language translation. That's a good one. That's a good one. It's good. Social media features is coming in pretty strong. Okay. But what about, you probably never heard, heard of this sentiment analysis. Like when you're in chat GPT, or if you are speaking to Alexa and other systems, they'll try to understand your sentiment, your emotions, you know, how you use your voice to translate how they should respond. And they take that data to learn how they should respond. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. Sentiment analysis. All right. This is good. You all are right. You are right, 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 for sure. It is social media features. Social media features. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so what are we doing here today? Well, why am I here? Here, I'm Milton Davis. I'm here at one because I love STEM. How did I get involved with STEM? Well, it's RC cars. That's how I started. Also, I just love football and I love basketball and chess. I just threw that out there. But it was RC cars and it was also these TOEs that stop feet. That is theories of everything. I just love space. But, you know, I didn't go to the best college. They just, no, the high school, they just didn't talk a lot about career readiness. So I self-enrolled in a community college. Nothing wrong with that. While I was there, my counselor said, Milton, you got to figure this thing out. What you're going to do? So I mixed the RC cars, which is engineering, and the TOEs, which is space. And I got an internship at NASA. So blessed. I've been there since 2001. And I went to Purdue University, where I got a bachelor's in aerospace and aeronautical engineering. And bam, that is me as an intern a long time ago. But what hasn't changed is the engineering design process that you're going to use on this machine learning lab. That's the same one I use to build oh, spacecraft. That's what I'm doing. That's what I, I build spacecraft. And this spacecraft, what it's going to do is do something that we've never been able to do at NASA, is build things in space. Like our rockets are just too small to take large things like the James Webb Space Telescope or Hubble into space without having to deploy them. So we're going to build in space. That's, that's part one. But part two has a lot to do with machine learning. What do I mean by that? Well, part two of this is making this spider robot 2.0, where we won't control the robot to build in space. It'll build all by itself. What we're doing right now in phase one is we're giving it a bunch of teaching data so that it can learn through machine learning to train itself to improve how it builds the James Webb, to improve how it builds habitable structures on the moon or on Mars. And as it gains experience and additional data, it'll do it much better than we ever were. Hola, <laughs> Dr. Nicole, all right? So that's what we're talking about, machine learning. And shout out to my really good buddy, Joanna Caudle, and the interns that developed this lab. Let's go over the basics of machine learning. So we're going to watch this video very briefly. And after this video, we're going to talk about how the catapult ties into this. But pay attention to the video so you can learn some more about machine learning. So let's start with a very simple example. Consider you're creating a game of rock, paper, scissors. When you play this with a human, it's very basic. Every child can learn it in just a few minutes. Now let's take a look at the most basic part of a game that the human brain is really good at, and that's recognizing what it's actually looking at. So consider these images. Most people can look at them and instantly recognize which ones are rock, which ones are paper, and which ones are scissors. But how would you program a computer to recognize them? Think about all of the diversity of hand type, skin color, and even people who do scissors like me with their thumb sticking out, and people who do scissors with their thumb in. If you've ever written any kind of code, you'll instantly realize that this is a really, really difficult task. It might take you thousands or tens of thousands of lines of code, and that's just to play rock, paper, or scissors. So what if there was a different way to teach a computer to recognize what it sees? What if you could have a computer learn in the same way that a human does? That's the core of machine learning and the path to artificial intelligence. So traditional programming looks like this. You have data, for example, a feed from the webcam, and you have rules that act on this data. 
These rules are expressed in a programming language and are the bulk of any code that you write. Ultimately, these rules will act on the data and give you an answer. Maybe it sees a rock, maybe it sees a paper, and maybe it sees scissors. But what if you turn this diagram around, and instead of you as the programmer figuring out the rules, you instead give it answers with the data and have the computer figure out what the rules are? That's machine learning. So now I can have lots of pictures of rocks and tell a computer that this is what a rock looks like, and this is what paper looks like, and this is what scissors looks like. And I can have a computer figure out the patterns that match them to each other. Patterns. Then my computer will have learned to recognize a rock, paper, and scissors. That's the core of building something that uses machine learning. You get a set of data that has patterns inherent in it, and you have a computer learn what those patterns are. That's good. And you're probably wondering, what does so that, let's start what with does a that very have simple... to do with the catapult? Well, you're going to build a catapult today. I'm so excited about it. And you're going to launch that catapult. And when you launch that catapult, you're going to get a bunch of data, a lot of data. We hope you get enough data where you'll make a plot of that system. And once you make a plot of that data at a certain angle, you get to come up with a model. It's just an equation just using the data. And once you have that model, it's great. You'll relaunch that catapult at an angle that you desire and see how well your model can predict the data. You'll see how accurate it is and you'll see how precise it is, okay? You got that? So you'll build a catapult, you'll launch it, you'll get data, and then you'll come up with a model for that data and then you'll see how accurate it is, all right? All right, I, I see you out there, Hector, okay? So after that, you know, type this in the chat. Oh, oh how was, how's my audio? Somebody said they can't hear. Shout out to Jay Winthrop for letting me know. Audio's good on our end. All right, Welcome. good. All right, that's good. So, hey, check this out. If you have a catapult and for some reason your model is just not able to predict the data for whatever reason, maybe it's just not, it's just not, the model's not as accurate. What do you think you could do to improve a catapult? That's what we want you to think about. What could you do to improve your catapult? More data. Excellent, Metcalf. More data. That's what you learned from the video. How about the catapult system itself, the mechanism? What do you think you can do to improve the mechanism? Great answer, Metcalf. Whoever that was directly from Metcalf Homeschool, you are solid in listening. What could you do to improve the catapult? You may need some time to think about that. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay, cool. Great. Great. Think about that. What do you do to improve your catapult? What could be wrong with it? Angle. That's nice. Okay. Oh, the constant spirit. Thank you. The angle. That's good. Angle. That's good. All right. I'll give it, I'll give it a couple more. We're going to go through this as well. I'll give it a couple more, a couple more seconds to think, think through it. What could you do to improve this tension? That's excellent. Apex. Maybe it's something to do with the rubber bands or whatever system you have in tension. That's good. Keep thinking about it. That's excellent. Good job, Apex. Good job, Metcalf and Constance. Power. All right. I'll, I'll roll with that. Yeah, maybe it's your arm. Like how, how far you're pulling it back, the accuracy of the human being. That's good. Good. All right. So how do computers, how do we do this with computers? Well, machine learnings come up with a model, just like you'll come up with some sort of equation or model for your catapult. And the model could ask, answer questions like, is it a dog or is it a cat? We talked about machine uh, we talked about marine wildlife, right, and its ability to utilize image recognition to try to predict, you know, marine life, you know, that's becoming um, um, extinct, right? All these mathematical models are what we use to, to learn the data and come up with a better way to predict. That's all we're doing, machine learning to predict. So how we develop these algorithms is you take the teaching data. You always got to start with data. So that's why I want to go back to that great, great answer. Um, from someone talked about data, and then you make up some algorithm. When you launch your catapult, you'll make an algorithm. It's, pr it's made pretty easily, even if it's linear, you know, using a you know, linear equation. And then, you know, you have your, your model and then you, you use it to predict something. So you will use it to predict how far, based on the angle of your launch, that your projectile will travel. 
That's what you'll use it for. And then you'll do that over and over again. You'll try it over and over again, giving it more and more data until your model becomes accurate. That's machine learning. That's machine learning. Let's play with this real quick. I'm going to type this in. The, I'm going to put this link in the chat real quick. And you can try it out. Let's play with this, OK? So um, I am going to attempt to draw uh, a digit, right? And this is gonna, what it's supposed to do is predict numbers. So if I type in the number two, it should recognize that hopefully as the number two. This system is called um, a convolution neural network, deep learning algorithm, which can take an input like an image, then it assigns an importance to it, and then based on weights and biases and other things, it predicts, okay? So I'm gonna recognize it and it spot on comes up with the number two. Hopefully you can play with that as well. Sometimes your computers at home or at school may not allow you to play with it and that's okay, right? So that's the number two. But let's say I do something else. This is a little harder, like a number seven. Type in the chat. I mean, I'm, or I'll just say this. It came out with a number one. Like, why does it predict a number one for a number seven? Why would it do that, anyone? Type in the chat, why would it predict a number one versus a number seven? Why would it predict? Okay, we got a lot of, not bad answer, seven is odd. Okay, not a bad answer, Frederick. Similar form, right? So it, it, it appears, it kind of looks like a one. And again, that's why we have to give it better teaching data. Excellent. Vertical line. Thank you. Yeah, excellent, Metcalf. It learned something just tall. That's excellent. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, everybody, keep the chat focused on machine learning. That's good. Okay, excellent. So you, we play with that. So what it's doing is, in that exercise, there's an algorithm, and it recognizes the number we drew. It almost has all these pixels that are in the background. Um, and it's comparing that in some array to determine based on its information what a number nine is you know if it sees something that comes close to this bright range of what a number nine looks like that's good but if it falls kind of outside of a number nine it doesn't predict it well so this is it assigns a, a real number it assigns a real weight that's what you're seeing here all these zeros are saying no that's not a number nine if it if it assigns a higher number it's saying yes that's closer to a number nine so if I types, if I draw in something that comes close to the weighted area, it's going to predict the number nine. But if I don't, it's not. That's the data, okay? So then we, it takes all that data now from you. Like I drew in a number nine or I drew in a number seven. Maybe, I, maybe I, I'm only one piece of data. Now it needs your information, right? It needs from DTS. It needs your information, Metcalf, right? It needs all of your data to improve its ability to predict more accurately okay more accurately all right so next question for you type this in the chat do you think there are things a computer can learn to do that we as humans can't do do you think and if so you know what kind of things do you think a human can do what do you think there are th i mean computer can learn to do that a human can't do What do you think there are some things that a, com uh, a computer can learn to do that a human can't do? Give me an example. And vice versa, are there some things a human can do that a computer can't do? Rapid calculations, thank you, Constance. That's right, rapid calculations. Definitely a computer can do that, for sure. Definitely a computer can do that, for sure. Yep, and any, any other things you think a computer can do that a human can't do. Okay. Yeah, great. Emotion. Thank you, Frederick Douglass. They typed that directly to me. A human, emotions. X. So someone else said humans have emotions and computers can only recombine our emotions. So they don't. That is excellent, Metcalf. 
Frederick Douglass Metcalf. Excellent. Great. That's great. Now, let's talk about our lab activity. We are excited about this one. What you're going to do today is, again, you're going to use these machine learning principles to develop repeatability. Excellent, Eagle. Excellent. Computers can, can repeat. Very nice. Frederick Douglass determine, detects sarcasm. That is spot on. I mean, that's challenging for a computer. Very challenging. Nice. Spot on. So what we're going to do is you're going to develop the catapult so you can understand the process of machine learning. Now, you might wonder, you know, like again, how are we tying in the catapult to machine learning? Well, remember this, you and the catapult are gonna utilize machine learning to better predict your catapult launches, all right? So you'll have some teaching data. You'll, you'll build your own catapult design. I'm so excited about it. I'm gonna build a design as well and compete with you today. And then we're gonna test various impacts in, input factors and collect some data. You may, what kind of data would you collect? Well, as you launch from different angles, you may see, hey, when I launch, launch my uh, projectile, it's going too far to the left. It's going too far to the right. Why is that? Why isn't it moving straight? That's data. You also may see that your base, your structure is bending. You may see that it wobbles and moves too much when you launch it. Or maybe the projectile is just a little too, too uh, loose inside of your system. All of that will not improve your data, it'll mess up your data, okay? So you're gonna take that data and develop a model, uh, improve your model to come up with a better prediction. And what you'll do in developing this catapult is you'll use the engineering design process. The engineering design process is very important. We still use it today, today even at NASA. It's important because it allows you to do some research, to develop a design, maybe even on paper, before you move forward with building. And that's important because you'll have a better build. And then we've given you enough materials where you can keep testing and failing and testing and failing until you come up with a predictable model that you are ready to compete. Maybe we'll have a, com a competition in our wrap up session, Monica. We'll see, we'll see who's the most accurate, who is the most precise. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so here's some catapult terms. I mean, you got to understand the lingual. You got to understand the language to ensure you develop a good system, and so you know how you want to improve and give it better data. So you have your lever, you have your your fulcrum. You you definitely want to develop a solid base. Then your arm. That's important. What's really important is the tension. How will you develop a system where you can get consistent tension? You know, are you going to use the tension? in a plastic spoon? Are you gonna use rubber bands? That's up to you, that's up to you. But you wanna have at least a base, a frame, and some way to stop the lever so that you can launch it accurately. So we're gonna give you a bunch of different materials as well. We'll give you some materials, you already have that in your hands, and hey, you may have other materials, even from your classroom or from your home that you wanna utilize, but again, Use that engineering design process. Start with some research, like what's the problem you're trying to solve? Make, do a little research, design it, then test and keep testing until you come up with something that works really well. We even threw in a couple different examples of what input data should look like, right? That input data may be the number of rubber bands, or it may be how high you stack, you know, this, this catapult, right? It may be the angle by which you're launching it. All of that is data to help you improve. We all, we, hey, we're engineers. We like to collect the data in a table. And once you have that data, you'll be able to graph it and make some predictions. But as always with the scientific method, try to control variables so you understand the data. You know, we can't, we, you know, we, we wanna, if we're gonna uh, have a test run, we're gonna mo launch it multiple times at a single height, or we're gonna launch it multiple times at a single angle uh, at a single angle, come up with that data and analyze it, okay? So just here are a couple examples of how to use that data. Again, you're gonna uh, predict the flight. You may launch it at a height of two centimeters, that setting. And then later on, you may launch it at, at five centimeters. You'll come up with all of that different data and then you'll graph it and come up with a model. 
here's an example launch from my buddy Eric Einset. He's showing you a, a simple catapult. And look at what he's done. He's used a few of these popsicle sticks to control his launch height. And, and he's launching away. Now, I know you all are going to come up with some really nice systems, and you're going to be able to launch it even further than this. But far isn't as important, remember, as accurate, all right? Being able to predict. So then you'll, you'll gather all that data again. And once you gather that data, that is your model and prediction. And then you'll improve it and come up with an even better model, all right? So in conclusion, how are we pulling this all together? You develop a catapult, you're going to have so much fun doing this. We're excited to see it. You'll pull in all that into an algorithm and a technique, and you'll output a model, hopefully, that predicts your launch distance. But if it doesn't, though, that's okay. We'll keep trying over and over again. That is the engineering design process. I really hope you enjoy everything involved with machine learning. It is, it's a game changer. A lot of different uh, areas within our life. I mean, machine learning is driving almost every area of our life. It touches everything. So I'm hoping you enjoy learning some about it and you, you enjoy implementing it through machine learning. And if you like these topics, artificial intelligence and computer algorithms and statistics, all of those are coupled. And there are a lot of different disciplines that are involved, right? You have computer science for sure. If I had to do it all over again, I would definitely take computer science as a minor but also systems engineering. How do you get the entire system to work in computer engineering? So with that, I am going to pass this over to my good buddy, May, uh, Monica, to talk to you all about next steps. Hey, Monica, what are we doing next? Well, I we're going to send everybody into breakout rooms so they can start designing and building their catapults and testing. We're going to have some mentors and some ET staff engineers in those breakout rooms to assist with any questions. So I hope you all are ready. The breakout rooms are going to open shortly. 